Hey everyone, it's Heather LaPaglia with Senior Blue Book University. I have with me Kathy Himes from Grace Manor North Park. Um, she is the executive director there and I am just so excited to speak with her and learn a little bit more about Grace Manor. Um, Kathy, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your roles and responsibility there. Hello, um, yeah, I'm Kathy. I came to Grace Manor in uh, August of last year. Um, and as I came here, uh, I was new to the area, so it was a lot of learning the different areas and things, and the community in the area has been wonderful as far as really opening their arms and going through all of this as much as we can, the way things were at the time being, you know. Um, I've worked in the field since 2004, so um, I've been through a lot of things, but can say this has been the most trying year and a half that I've had in this field. But we've all come out through it and begin the you know process of regrowing and through this pandemic. So excited about that as we move forward. Sorry. She's an executive director, so the, <laughs> the phone does not stop ringing. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> That's good. And, and I, I know that your challenges as far as like operations and day to day are probably very similar to other senior livings in the area as well, but could you talk a little bit about that and how you and the team pivoted just to make sure that everybody was safe? Yeah, I mean, the top priority has always been the resident safety. Um, you know, at times that was very difficult because we also really felt the need that the residents had to be hugged by their loved ones, to be seen by their loved ones. Um, you know, that, that was really, it was difficult on us that we're here every day. Um, and the things that I don't think a lot of people really saw because we struggled with that. We wanted the families here as much as they wanted to be here, but we also had to make sure we were doing what was best for the residents. And at times that's a tough call to make. And when you sit in this chair, you're the one that has to make that call and you have to live with that decision that you make. And Going back, I wouldn't change it, um, but it's been tough, you know. Um, we have put things in place maybe differently than some of the other ones have, because again, we have the dementia clientele we have, and that's tough, you know, you can't social distance them, you can't do that. So you have to look out for what's best for them, and, and that's tough, and it's been tough for the staff to see. Um, you know, as they've gone through this, but I'm telling you one thing, if nothing else, it really has put growth in the staff. Um, they've grown a lot through this process. They've seen more than what a lot of people have seen in the process. And it's been great. It's brought them together professionally, personally, uh, you know, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the fact that I got to see a lot of these young staff members grow quickly in this field, because as we know, this field, you see a lot, but they kind of saw it all at once. You know, um, they saw the regulatory side, they saw the personal side, they saw the family side. Um, so it, it's been a good experience um, now that we're hitting towards the end of it. Um, and, you know, let's just continue to grow that way. But yeah, I'm just thrilled that the families are starting to be able to be seeing their loved ones again, because that is important. And it, it was tough when I'd have to say, no, you can't come for the hundredth birthday, you know, and as much as that affected them, it also affected all of us because we really knew we were taking something very special away, but we tried to make up for it here as their temporary family and have the parties and have the things that we could to make those times special, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Have, have has things kind of gone back to quote unquote normal for you guys in your day to day? We are slowly doing that. Again, I've chose to do this slowly because I want to protect everybody. Um, here at Grace Manor, we are 99% vaccinated of residents and 99% vaccinated for staff. Um, we have only one staff member not vaccinated and that was due to a medical reasoning. Um, but you know, so we are pretty vaccinated here. Um, families are coming in. They are starting to go to the rooms. Um, we still are encouraging the outside visits as long as we can. 
um, because number one, it's good for the residents to get out. Um, and it's just that double layer of safety right now. So it's working and the families are really supportive and being great about it. That was going to be my next question. I, I was wondering how the families responded to that, but I'm sure that they were able to be appreciative of the fact that you are, like you said, putting the residents' health and safety first. Mm, absolutely. Um, even though it's a tough call, um, yeah, need to protect them them first. Yeah. Um, are there any um, upcoming events that you guys are doing right now that you would like to talk about, whether it's virtual or in person, um, that you want to share with the community? We're just starting to look at some things. We're looking at trying to get something going in the parking lot um, to get them. We have a beautiful porch in the front of our building. So, you know, the residents are able to be up there and see. And we kind of want to do like a parking lot parade or something with the residents just to kind of, you know, start everything back up and get them moving. We have begun the um, in-house activities with um, our different agencies and that where they're coming in and doing that stuff. So that's really been nice. But um, again, we're just taking it slow to make sure we've got everything covered and move forward in a positive way. Perfect. And you said you are accepting admissions. So what would a good uh, candidate look like for Grace Manor as a resident, just in case there's any family members watching that are looking for a, a place for their loved one? Well, we really pretty much can take the residents at all levels. Um, we do have our third floor now that is a memory care. Um, so that really makes a difference for the residents because we're seeing a lot of spouses and one does not have memory and one does. And we're able to let them both come and be cared for and still spend that quality time together. That's very important and have all the help that they need. Um, we also, you know, want to be utilized to be able to help the caregivers at home because I mean, we acknowledge they do a fantastic job and I don't want them to ever feel they don't. But every once in a while, they just need that break, you know, so we encourage them to do some respite stays in and out. You know, we I've done over my years of this um, where I've had families that do it every month that they, you know, come in a week a month and they know that they have that chance to really, you know, spend that time for themselves, which is important for the caregiver. And sometimes that's overlooked. And uh, unfortunately, because they're so busy taking care that they don't realize that they forgot to take care of themselves. And we, we just want to encourage that. We want to be part of that with the caregiver, part of their team. Um, so, you know, that's something else we want to do in the community. So, you know, whatever way we can help. And if they choose to place them at another facility, it doesn't mean that we don't want to be a resource for them. You know, we want to still help them. We want to be part of that if they have questions um, why they're going through that process. Okay, fantastic. So Kathy, tell us a little bit about how Grace Manor is different than some other senior living uh, communities in the area and what services you all specialize in. Well, I said one of the things that we have just added in February was our secured up on our third floor. Uh, I really started to identify that unfortunately with COVID, that that was one of the things we were starting to see the most of the need for in the seniors, um, you know, and personally, I just feel that it was, you know, to the isolation and not having the contact and stuff that, you know, people started withdrawing more. And unfortunately, that's what I'm seeing with the outcomes. So we immediately, you know, discussed it among ourselves and said, you know, if that's what the need is, then we need to step up to the plate. So the owners were really good about letting me completely close the floor down. We um, went ahead and started from scratch on the third unit uh, or the third floor and put in a complete secured um, dementia unit. It's an 18 bed unit. Um, just last week, I have asked to expand it to 25 beds because we're filling it very quickly. Um, so we have that there. So they're able to, again, if a spouse has it and the other one doesn't, you know, we're able to meet them there. Um, we're also able, as our people progress down on floor one and two, they don't have to leave the caregivers they know. We just can be able to move them up there. Uh, we use a lot of the home health hospice palliative cares in-house 
so that we're able to keep them here to try to do the things that we can do with them you know, here versus taking them out, especially with the dementia unit, it's very difficult for them because they get very disoriented. Um, you know, so we're trying to look at stuff like that. Um, we do respite here again, you know, reaching out, trying to take care of the caregivers as much as the residents because they, you know, seem to forget that they're not taking care of themselves. So we encourage that, you know, take the time take the break, um, you know, they're doing a fantastic job caring for these people. And we just wanna be part of that team with them to help them and give them the support that they need regardless what they choose to do. Even if they just having a bad day and hey, I don't know what to do with her, call us, let us give you some ideas, let us give you some tips. You know, we'll walk through it with you, whatever it is, no matter when it is, you know, we just wanna be that resource to help them and support them. That's fantastic, Kathy. I really appreciate that. And thank you again for your time. Um, we will be sure to share this information with the public. And I hope to be able to speak with you real soon. That sounds good. And I appreciate everything you guys do as we work together to try to work the best for our seniors. Fantastic. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Have a great day. Yep. Bye-bye.